For the DNA strand blank, I'm going to use two cherry blanks. And what I'm going to do is on one of the blanks, I'll draw five lines, I'll cut the blank, and then I'll insert or glue pieces of aluminum can into each of the cuts. Once the glue dries, I'm thinking I can flip the blank over, cut my angle, then I'll take the other blank, I'll cut the same angle on that blank, I'll swap the tops and glue them together. Once they're glued up and the glue is dry, I'm thinking I can cut the opposite angle on both blanks, swap them again, and what that should do is give me um, the lines within the, the ovals uh, for the DNA strands so that all I have are um, two ovals with hopefully about five lines a piece in them. I picked a spot, and it actually was rather arbitrary. It turned out to be about seven centimeters down on the blank, and then there's about six centimeters left, so it's a little over halfway. I think if you made the mark at halfway, that would work as well. There was no math to that. I just sort of, sort of drew it. Um, I found the center of the blank, and I drew a line from the center straight down, and then, of course, I divided it in half and drew a line on either side and then went from the, the outer edge and drew a line to the center. So what I'm going to do is take this to the scroll saw and cut these five lines down to this point and I'll insert um, an aluminum can and get it glued back together and uh, I'll bring it back and show you what that looks like. With the blank freshly cut, the first thing I want to do is make sure that I can get the aluminum all the way down to the bottom of the cut. And it looks like I can. Um, so what I'm going to do now is drool some CA in there and then we'll slide our can in and get it glued up. I want to put plenty of CA glue on here. I'm hoping, see how it's starting to drill through the other side? That's what I really care about. I want the glue all the way through. And you can see now that it is. So I'll put a little bit on the other side. And then I'm going to take my aluminum can and I'm going to attempt to slide it down inside the blank. Okay, I've reached the bottom and it's bottomed out on the back side. So I'm very happy about that. Now we're going to take a little bit of accelerator and hit the can, get it to dry quickly. I'm going to grab a razor knife and I'm going to cut the excess aluminum off of the blank. This aluminum cuts very easily with a razor blade. Once you get started, you can just cut right along the blank and take the entire piece of aluminum right down. We'll get to the end and we'll just cut it off. And that can go to the recycling bin and I'm ready for my next cut. I've got all five of the lines cut down to the center point. Now you can see I kind of got off down here a little bit. It got kind of dicey when you got to the thin wood with all the CA and everything on it. But I don't think that'll matter because I'm probably only going to use the upper part of the blank. If you look at the back side, you can see that it's got a little glue on there. It's hard to see, but they come straight through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this blank kind of like I would uh, a Celtic knot blank, except I'm only going to cut the X on two sides, here and here. As I cut those X's, or as I cut each piece off, I'll mimic the cut on this blank. So I'll cut here and here, and then I'm going to swap tops and glue them together. And the idea is, by doing that, I'm hoping I can remove all of this wood and all of this wood and just have this center section inside of the oval to give the DNA the sort of DNA appearance. 
I looked at this blank and found where it started to kind of go a little sideways on me and I marked a line there and I carried that line around to the side of the blank and matched it up with this blank. And then I went ahead and measured up one half of an inch and drew another line and then I marked the X on the side of both of the blanks. Now I'm just going to go to the scroll saw, cut this off, cut this off, and then I'll swap the tops, glue them back together with a piece of aluminum between them. Once they're dry, I'll cut the other angle, do the same thing, swap the tops and glue them back together. I'll come back and show you what I've got once I get that finished. I've taken the blank that I initially cut all the lines into, I flipped it over and I cut at an angle or a diagonal the top section off. I then glued that top section onto another blank, which I also cut the top section off of and reversed back to this blank. I took very special care to line up the other diagonal line so that I get a nice clean cut. The blanks do not look real straight, but that's all right. That will turn out. By using a surrogate blank, what I was able to do is I had my lines cut in my blank and the aluminum glued in. As I cut the blank apart, and swapped the tops of each blank, I was able to create a blank with lines right in the center of this X. Now, when you cut an X on a blank like this and you turn it, it's gonna turn into a circle. I'm hoping by having it squat down to a half an inch here that it'll stay more of an oval, and within that oval, it will contain these five lines on each side of the blank. What I need to do now is get this blank drilled and get a tube glued in there. And I've got to be very, very careful to go straight down. You can see it's not perfectly straight anymore because I actually wanted to make sure I lined up my lines. So I've got to be extra careful to get that tube going down through here at a perfect perpendicular angle to these two lines. I decided to do this pin as a modified slim line, so I went ahead and shortened the blank and I drilled a hole completely through. Um, I was very careful. I marked the center line so that I, since the blank is not perfectly straight so that I could hit the center line going right down through the uh, cross and uh, I used a 1 8 inch bit and started the hole. You can see where I marked it on the top. I started the hole uh, and went straight down through the center and then I came back and put my 7 millimeter bit in and went ahead and drilled the hole all the way through the blank. So it's a little off at the bottom but there's plenty of meat and it's okay if it goes that way. I just need to make sure that through this point, everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get the tube, the top tube glued in, and then we're gonna barrel trim and get this on the lathe. Got my blank barrel trimmed and I've got it chucked up. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Uh, I'm going to go extremely slow and extremely light with the cuts. Now when I say slow, I mean me working the tool. With the lathe, I've got this thing turned up as fast as it will go, which is somewhere between probably 2,800 and 3,000 RPMs. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin it fast, I'm going to take light cuts, and I'm not going to go deep. We're just going to go nice and easy. We're going great. I love how this blank was turning out. It's kind of resembling a DNA uh, strand, sort of. Um, and then I had this happen. Blew it out. Um, I have searched this the table. I've searched all the sawdust on the floor. I've looked all around the shop with flashlights, like you know, laying my head down by the floor trying to locate that little piece. Even pulled the shop back out and sorted through it and couldn't find it. 
So as unfortunate as it, as it seems, I think I'm going to have to improvise a fix. Um, so let me put my thinking cap on and see what I can come up with. I've got a piece of aluminum can here and I run it across the sandpaper to rough it up. And what I'm going to try to do is sort of angle it to fit. Okay, that's, that's not too bad right there. Now what I think I'm going to do, let me see if that push it down in the back there. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the glue and I'll get this glued in nice and tight. I'm going to try to rough the outside edge up just a little bit more to make sure that it holds in there. But I'm going to glue this right here and then we'll glue some sawdust on top of it. I'm going to use a medium CA glue. And what I think I'm going to do is put the glue in here and then I'll lay the aluminum on top of it. And then I'm going to use sawdust, a bunch of sawdust and press it in there so that I don't glue the can to my finger and uh, see if we can't get this piece glued in. Then we'll come back and fill in with sawdust and glue. So let's get uh, some good coverage in here. This is a little medium CA. Okay. Get some sawdust. Get a good amount here and we'll push, push that down in there. I'm gonna hold it for a second. And I should have had this ready, but I'm gonna grab my accelerator. I think what I'm going to do now is, since I've got this fix here, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and basically run CA over everything just to make sure I can kind of keep everything tightly in there. Then I think I'm going to flip this blank over. And the reason why is I'm coming this away and I'm afraid I'm going to catch that again and rip it out. So if I flip it over, work it from the other side, then maybe I can work it down and cut that excess off. But first thing I'm going to do is, is get a CA um, all over everything just to make sure this is a thin CA and I'm just making sure that you know I'm, I'm, I'm sealing things up I don't want anything to be to be uh, loose or any gaps in there or anything so this will help a lot all right now let me get her flipped around and we'll start turning again Well, I think I'm going to call it quits on turning. Uh, I kind of like the shape. Uh, you can see there's where I applied my fix. Uh, it doesn't look as awesome as I would like it to, but uh, you can see that it was a little bit crumpled up here, the can, when it went in. And I think that being crumpled up like that is what allowed me to get my catch on the opposite side. Uh, other than that, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and sand it up and finish it and put this pin together. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Got my blank sanded up and I'm ready to uh, apply a finish. I really like how it turned out. Just that one little corner over there and I think the whole thing started with a bad glue up. Um, I really love this. That th This concept has proved out. I know that I can make another one of these and I really think, I think this is a cool idea. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some finish on here now and we'll get her assembled. Here's a question that I've been asked multiple times. When you make a modified slimline pin, sometimes you can hit it on your finger and the brass tube will pop right out. But most times you're not that lucky. I get the punch out of my punch kit. I put it inside of the blank and I put it at a bit of an angle and I just sort of pull the tube out. That enables me to get the tube out of the blank so that I can go ahead and press the nib and the transmission into it. Here is my finished pin. I really think the idea of a DNA strand was a, was a very cool idea. And I really believe that uh, it's achievable, very easily achievable. I had a little bit of bad luck. That happens to all of us. I tried to apply a fix. It doesn't look all that great, um, but I know what to do next time. I know what to look out for next time. And the next time I attempt to turn one of these pins, 
uh, I expect to have uh, very good luck. I went with the modified slimline. Ink turns out by the nib and retracts by the nib. I elected not to put a clip on this blank because I left it fatter in the middle so that I could really see the design. Um, I probably could have taken it down a little farther, but you can see how close it's getting uh, to the corners of the, the DNA um, oval. And uh, I was really losing this side and I, I didn't want to lose any more of that. So I went ahead and stopped. I think this is a, a cool design, a cool concept. And uh, I overall like the pen. Um, and uh, next one I do, I think is going to be a whole lot better than this one. I would really like to thank everybody for hanging out in the shop with me tonight while I attempted to prove out the concept of uh, making a, a DNA strand on an ink pen. This was kind of cool. Uh, Paul Tyler sent me an email and uh, said that he was interested in doing a design like this, I guess to make a pen for his girlfriend, and asked me if I had any idea how to do it. And immediately my mind started racing and I got all these ideas and I really think what I did uh, by using the surrogate blank uh, will work great. Uh, I just think I probably need to try a second pen because I had a tiny bit of bad luck tonight, but uh, you know, well, I was able to fix it. And I think overall the pen looks really, really kind of cool. I, I like it. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop and I want you to come back and see me again real soon. Everybody have a great evening.